is the inevitability here, Professor, that if indeed Putin gets what he wants and is able to create a, a hollow state in Ukraine and that NATO and the Western powers cannot push him back, he will not surrender, that the inevitability is North Korea and China will become further emboldened, they will become part of this effort, they will move forward, and they will then think to themselves, the West has shown how weak they are, we can now take advantage and we can make our own moves, and that will take us even a step further to nuclear conflagration. Ed, already from United States perspective, Russia is not the big threat, China is the big threat, and already China has told us and made it clear to us about their sphere of influence. Now, are they going to go do to Taiwan as Russia did to Ukraine? I don't know. This is a variable. It's a question. And I hope they don't do it now. But from their perspective, the Chinese already, they have their own policy. This is their sphere of influence. South China Sea, part of East China Sea, and Taiwan, with a, you know, they don't expect Taiwan to, to be, you know, treated or to be given sophisticated weapons, you know, or some country says, listen, Taiwan is not part of China. This is, you know, really already we have, you know, Chinese have their outlook and we know about China. We know about China. So the point is today, the point is today, how you are going to respond without, you know, prolonging this catastrophe. Then let's go there. Really? How do we then respond without prolonging? You, you, have, you have sooner or later, sooner or later, Ed, and this is what happened, you know. Here, there is a question. Okay, you go to World War II, this is what we did to Japan. How we, do, how we brought about the defeat of Japan? We threw nuclear weapon. We fought the Nazi. We went to Berlin. We destroyed Berlin. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget that. Now, can you do this with Russia? You ask yourself. Can you do with this Russia? No. Can Ukraine do this with Russia? No. So really what happened today, today you have a new variable on the on the scene. And that variable, this is terrifying variable, uh, is nuclear weapons. And Russia has the largest inventory of nuclear warheads. And let me go further also because we have to think about the responses to our action, not only our action. You have to study, you know, the scenario, how he's going to respond. There is something, if you read the, the, the military uh, 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 strategic doctrine of uh, Russia, which really was issued in 2009. Russia, you know, gives itself the authority, you know, when it is threatened to use nuclear weapons in unconventional warfare. So, 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 so this is where we have, and this is why, thank you, God, the Biden administration said, listen, I'm not going to go. And NATO, you know, the secretary general of NATO he has been to Poland and to other say, listen, guys, we have to help the Ukrainian. And absolutely, we have to help the Ukrainian. But we are not. But we don't want the war to spill over. Because if it spilled over, that's mean a huge war with catastrophic results. But, but it then leads us to believe and leads me to believe and others, perhaps, that we've lost because we weren't we didn't have any prescient view on what was happening here. We're going to give Russia what they want. China's going to get what they want. North Korea will get involved and get what they want. And we, as the peaceful powers of the world, simply cannot stop them at this Russia point is not without the fear that we will blow the place to shreds. Listen, Russia is not going to have its what it wants because its economy now, it went back. I, I, I don't want to say to the dark age that is affected. No, I think the dark thing. ages is pretty close. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And and, and, and he's not going to, and, and I mentioned that before, he's not going to have all his demand. No maximalist demand. That is a compromise. So really, I won't say that, you know, United States or NATO lost. No, Russia has suffered and it will suffer. Now, now again, the future of Russia, even after you have a compromise, they have a lot of investment with Germany via the Nord Stream. What's going to happen to them? So mainly now what we are going to see, you know, we are going to see a huge shift towards China. And this is where we are going to take a look now. This is where, Ed, now the next step. What's going to be the outlook, you know, of the international community after a compromise? And this is where we are going to see China and Russia and Iran more of cooperation, more of a world on its own. This remains to be seen. 